for the upcoming Distinguished Opening Panel, which will be chaired by Dr. Dieter Schillinger, the Deputy Director General of the International Livestock Research Institute. Dr. Schillinger, please over to you and thank you for opening this workshop. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thank you both Dr. Rao and Professor Kai van der Horst for this nice introduction, which uh, makes my job easier because I need to uh, go into the details. The objectives are clear. And I just only want to make sure that uh, from the experience we had at one meeting, it's very important to keep a little bit the time slots and uh, otherwise we run out of time and that's not fair to the many speakers we have in the two days. So I am just only uh, opening up the uh, remarks, opening remarks session. And uh, uh, this is about uh, getting the perspectives of the opening remarks uh, speakers from their personal view and the view of the institution they are coming from. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to start with Professor Akri Ambali. And he is the um, African Union from the African Union Development Agencies. And he's the head of the Science, Technology and Innovation Hub uh, of the new partnership, Africa's Development, the NEPAT in short. Over to you, Professor Agri Amali. So Dr. Schillinger, unfortunately, we just heard about two minutes ago ah, that Dr. Okay. Amali will not be able to join, which is very unfortunate. But Professor Gassama will be uh, opening instead for uh, Professor Ambali. Uh, Dr. Asama, Gassama, are you available? Yes. She was just on. Yes, <clears throat> I hope I can hand over. Yes. Um, for the opening remarks, <clears throat> my name is uh, Yaiken Gassama. I'm a plant biotechnologist. Uh, I was uh, formerly in the government of many years. And right now I'm chairing the um, high level panel on emerging technologies of African Union. Uh, so I'm very delighted uh, to have this opportunity to share my voice and the voice of AUDA uh, to speak about this important uh, topic, which is safeguarding against emerging and re-emerging veterinary and zoonotic diseases in Africa. Uh, the latest pandemic has heightened the urgency to put in place mechanisms that lead to more preparedness, to be proactive and preventive rather than reactive in facing new risks that could arise from the interaction between human animals and the environment. Lack of biosecurity measures beyond health and environmental issues have a very negative impact on the economy, loss of income and jobs, restriction imposed at the frontiers, loss of markets, dis disruption in the food chain, etc. And the World Health concept is particularly important okay. and relevant in the context of emerging diseases, such as though the world has experienced in recent decades. Biosecurity is fundamentally a one health issue that aims to better address emerging diseases at pandemic risk through an integrated and multidisciplinary approach at local, national, and global scale. And according to the World Organization for Animal Health, about 6% of existing human infectious diseases are zoonotic, with about 75% of emerging infectious diseases globally having an animal origin. It has been further estimated that five new human diseases occur every year, three being of animal source. And we have here a gap and challenge, great challenge, because in Africa, millions of people are consuming, exchanging, and trading products from the slaughter of wild animals. And we know that these wild animals carry a large number of pathogens that cause 
emerging infectious diseases like Ebola we experienced recently. And here I would like to emphasize the importance and urgency of conducting training and research program in Africa on cross species transmission to assess the mode of transmission of diseases between human and wildlife animals, to be better prepared, to provide advice and signals to prevent outbreaks in the IG. More specifically, we need to establish a systematic surveillance system for zoonotic virus in a wide range of animal species, domestic and wildlife, and understanding wildlife pathogens, timely prediction, early detection, warning on potential emerging pathogens will help shift from a reactive response, EID, to a proactive one. Therefore, we need to harness existing and emerging technologies to address challenges posed by zoonotic diseases on our continent and largely the globe. So the African Union High-Level Panel on Emerging Technologies endorses a One Health approach to addressing shared health traits at the human-animal environment interface for a safer and healthier Africa. APET is encouraging African countries to increase efforts toward adopting innovations and emerging technologies so as to reduce infections at this interface, human, animal, and environment. And to effectively support this, I put recommend the establishment of a continental one half platform over which it shall play an oversight role. This platform would coordinate transdisciplinary representation of all relevant national and regional stakeholders. And the platform will also be designed to showcase continental One Health research focusing on zoonotic diseases, surveillance, outbreak investigation, antimicrobial resistance, food safety, environmental health, and operational research. It would further highlight operational tools and guidance documents developed by African Union organs and our technical partners like WHO, OIE, and FAO. Finally, I'm hopeful that our discussions today and tomorrow will identify challenges and opportunities related to emerging and re-emerging zoonotic and veterinary diseases and the preparedness and response capacity in Africa. It will further support discussions on the way forward, such as the proposed continental One Health platform. Uh, thank you. I look forward to fruitful discussion. Thank you very much, Professor Yoye. Yeah, so it was great uh, to give this overview uh, from the perspective of the uh, African Union Development Agency, and uh, I think it's uh, good to hand over to uh, Dr. Jimmy Smith, the Director General of the International Livestock Research Institute, uh, which, as you heard, is one of the co-organizers of this meeting. Over to you, Jimmy. Thank you, Dieter. Colleagues, I can hear. I hope you can hear me well. I'm very pleased to be joining this, this webinar, which is co-hosted by ILRI, the AU NEPAD, and APARI. This webinar focuses on One Health issues, and particularly the interface of responding and preparing for the control of veterinary and zoonotic diseases. I will appear on a panel to discuss the challenges and opportunities in a little while. But let me, at this stage, attempt to say why ILRI is so interested in this webinar today. 
our colleagues who spoke before me have already emphasized the importance of this work. And ILRI's mandate, which is about using livestock to enhance livelihoods, is very much dependent on the success of One Health and Biosafety Biosecurity measures. We have a very strong complement of staff working in this area. I'm told 47, perhaps the dominant profession in the whole institution. So we are well teed up to respond to the challenges and opportunities in this area. But given the broad scope of it, we also must work in close partnerships with many others. So partnership underlines our engagement in every aspect of this work with veterinary departments, the private sector, other public institutions, and so on. And indeed, as we pursue this old approach, but one with which we're trying to reinvent to adapt to new circumstances, capacity development is a very in integral part of this. And ILRI is also a strong player in this area. I'm often very pleased as I go around Africa and elsewhere in the world to meet so many colleagues who tell me that they have been here at ILRI in one capacity or another, but particularly to do graduate and postgraduate work. Much of what we do at ILRI is linked to these areas of, of veterinary biosafety and security and adopting the One Health approach to these areas. So we work very much on zoonotic surveillance and detection. This, we believe, is the holy grail to early control or prevention. We work particularly with the governments here in Africa, but very closely with the government of Kenya in this particular circumstances of COVID tested and testing and genomic surveillance. We work in the area of biosafety, biosecurity, and climate change. This relates to many areas. As climate changes, we expect that vector dynamics will change. And not only that of Rift Valley fever, the focus of our current engagement, but increasingly this link between biosecurity and climate needs to be pursued. We work too on improving the safety of informal markets. As we know, most of the food in Africa is procured in informal markets without which food and nutritional security cannot be achieved. So making these markets more, uh, improving the safety of these markets is a prime part of what we do and part of our focus. We know that vaccines are the cheapest means of controlling most diseases. And whilst large pharmaceutical companies are involved in this area, there are many diseases for which there are market failures. And this, these are the vaccines which we, which we seek to develop here at Hillary. We also know that, as Dr. Rao said, we have lots of technologies, but they're not in the hands of those who can use it. So we aim with our partners at Ilri to not only develop, but get our technologies used as scale. So we see this, um, this webinar as a very important one, which we hope, as Dr. Rao said, will move from um, resolutions and action points to real actions in the field and delivering in this area that is so crucial to improving animal production and productivity, and indeed the livelihoods of those who use these animals. So thank you, Dieter. Thank you, Jimmy. It was great uh, to hear that. And uh, clearly our uh, Ilris uh, commitment to this area and I hand over to Jean-Philippe Dopp. Uh, Dr. Dopp is the Deputy Director General from the World Animal Health Organization, or OIE in short, and in this function also um, member of the tripartite, the tripartite plus. So over to you, Jean-Philippe. 
Thank you, uh, dear editor. It's always a, a pleasure to work with, with you and with Hilary and uh, other partners today. Uh, and I, I want to thank first all the organizers who uh, invited OIE. Uh, OIE, as you said, is an intergovernmental organization responsible for improving animal health as World Organization for Animal Health. We have uh, 182 members, including the 54 uh, from uh, Africa. Uh, and we are also recognized by the World Trade Organization as reference international sanitary uh, rules. Uh, Africa is very important for us. We have uh, four offices in, uh, in Africa, Bamako, Nairobi, Tunis, and, and Gaborone. And uh, we also established a, a One Health Regional Coordinator in, in Nairobi, uh, Dr. Shadia Wanous, who supported me for this uh, event. As she is now a, a One Health Global Coordinator at the OAE uh, headquarters in, in Paris. So uh, you see, uh, Africa experience is well uh, uh, represented in, uh, in our uh, organization. OIE, as you said, uh, promotes uh, One Health uh, for a long time as a fundamental competency of veterinary services and position veterinary services as key actors in, in One Health. OIE also continue to uh, uh, integrate wildlife health, emergency management, and sustainability into the OIE's existing networks, mechanisms, and, and platform. You mentioned uh, our membership of the tripartite. We are member for more than 10 years. Uh, we cooperate with our FAO and WHO, WHO colleagues in this very important platform. We worked on uh, rabies, avian influenza, uh, zoonotic influenza, IMR. And today we, we expanded uh, this cooperation to UNEP. Uh, which is very important to consider the environmental dimension of uh, One Health. So One Health requires a strong partnership between the key actors in animal, human, and environmental sectors. Uh, for that, OIE works through a wide network of partners, including ILRI. Uh, we are pleased to participate in uh, the One Health Research, Education, and Outreach Center in Africa, ORECA, uh, we, we will be discussing how to strengthen our partnership with uh, ILRI, which is very uh, important. Jimmy Smith mentioned uh, uh, the multiple competencies uh, of uh, ILRI in the One Health uh, domain, and it's very important to uh, cooperate together. In particular, for uh, some of the uh, strategic thematic areas in the region, uh, control of neglected tropical zoonotic diseases, emerging infectious diseases, uh, such as uh, Rift Valley fever, hemorrhagic fevers, food safety and in informal markets, which were mentioned uh, just now, and prevention and control of uh, antimicrobial uh, resistance. Recent work of OIE on one f includes advocating for the involvement of our organization and the veterinary services uh, in the negotiation process of a new pandemic instrument or treaty. Uh, so this will be discussed uh, within the uh, WHO governing bodies uh, starting from March uh, 2022. It will be uh, an important uh, and strategic uh, orientation. And we will promote veterinary services as key component of health workforces and as an essential element of one health resilience. OIE also supported the establishment of OLEP. OLEP is a One Health High Level Expert Panel. I have the pleasure to remind that uh, this panel is co chaired by, by two uh, eminent scientists, one of them being from uh, Africa, uh, Professor Vanda Marketer from the University of uh, Pretoria, and the other being uh, Thomas Mettenleiter from your home country, uh, Dieter, uh, as he is Director General of LFI in Germany. OLEP already uh, released a new definition of One Health, which recognizes the health of humans, domestic and wild animals, plants, and the wider environment, including uh, ecosystems. And uh, so I take this opportunity to mention that uh, One Health needs science. 
we need science systems for, for One Health. Many of you are scientists, and uh, I strongly supported the establishment of this panel, and I strongly support uh, the establishment and the strengthening of uh, One Health science systems. Uh, the work on OLEP uh, is uh, supported by four working groups, including uh, uh, surveillance, which was just mentioned. And OLEP supports uh, the four uh, Tripartite Plus organizations to develop a One Health uh, Global Plan of Action based on uh, six tracks. I will mention the different tracks, uh, uh, capacity building, emerging and uh, re-emerging zoonotic, epidemic and pandemics, neglected zoonotic diseases, food safety hazard again, antimicrobial resistance, and uh, environment and health. Uh, this work will uh, trickle down to regional and country level through an implementation framework and the resource mobilization. Uh, Bureau threat reduction is also very important and uh, is within our mandate. And OIE, OIE takes the threat posed by uh, accidental and deliberate release of animal pathogens very uh, seriously. OIE is implementing a number of activities that are aligned with the Global Partnership Signature Initiative to mitigate biological threats across the African continent. We support uh, different uh, projects. But as a conclusion, I, I will say that uh, we must realize a critical contribution that veterinary services make to health and national security. Uh, to do so, we need to provide, to provide them with the tools uh, including scientific knowledge, political support, and re the resources required to effective implementation of the One Health approach, uh, particularly at uh, country level. For this, we will continue to invest in international cooperation to better support our members all around the world, starting with uh, our 54 African members. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you very much, Jean-Philippe, and thank you also to uh, refer to OLEP because one of the confusions when we talk about One Health is that many, many different interpretations and definitions of One Health exist. And we, are, we were very happy as ILRI when OLEP came up with a clear definition of One Health, and I think uh, it is really covering uh, the most important areas. And, uh, it will help to focus all the institutions and scientists to work on one health idea. So we have another um, tripartite member, WHO, um, and uh, uh, Dr. Sumer Swaminathan, who is the WHO's first chief scientist. And she was coming in this position in March 2019. She can't attend, but she sent a video. And uh, I think uh, over to the... Ah, yes, studio. OK. Yes. Start. Greetings from the World Health Organization. I'm Dr. Samia Swaminathan, the chief scientist. And thank you so much for inviting me to say a few words. The COVID-19 pandemic is a powerful demonstration that the health of humans, animals, and ecosystems is intimately linked. For many people, One Health may have once simply seemed a concept. It is no longer. We can only prevent future pandemics with an integrated One Health approach, which involves public health, animal health, as well as the environment that we share. <coughs> One Health has to, of course, be more than a concept. It needs to be translated into systems at the local level that keep people safer. For example, we know that 70% of all emerging and re-emerging pathogens are zoonotic. And we also know that there is the possibility of the next pandemic or disease X, as the WHO called it. We don't know when that pandemic will happen or where it will happen but it is certain that it will happen uh, again. Um, but One Health needs to be more than just uh, zoonosis. We cannot protect human health <coughs> without considering the impact of human activities that disrupt ecosystems, encroach on habitats, and further drive climate change. 
and these activities including include pollution we have to think about both indoor and outdoor air pollution large scale, scale deforestation and extraction the intensification of agriculture and livestock production the farming of both domestic and wild animals the overuse and misuse of antibiotics and the way that we produce and consume and trade food <coughs> the who definitely supports <coughs> one health emphasis uh, which is also linked with the environment and this has been actually outlined in the manifesto the who manifesto for a healthy and green recovery from covid-19 indeed it's it's quite ironical that it takes a pandemic and covid-19 for us to drive change to do things differently going forward the whole world is interested in one health now it's going to be discussed at the forthcoming g7 and g20 meetings many national uh, consultations are happening uh, on this there is a tripartite which is the fao the organization of uh, animal health and who which along with the united nations environment program so it's a tripartite plus one are really taking up very seriously the issue of uh, tackling um, the, the whole uh, area of one health and formulating uh, frameworks and policies to be able to also monitor it at uh, the global level um we've seen a lot of collaborative activities both at uh, the global level but also at the regional and the country uh, levels for example there is a launch of the united against rabies uh, forum which is an example of all the different agencies and stakeholders coming together to um, tackle the problem of of uh, rabies which unfortunately still kills a lot of people in the world we continue to make uh, progress uh in establishing the governance structures that will curb the threat of antimicrobial resistance for example we have set up a global leaders group that held its first meeting this year where it is going to have regular meetings and there will also be an establishment of an independent panel on evidence for action to uh, tackle antimicrobial um, resistance who is planning to scale up further investments in one health and work along with the with the partner agencies to build consensus to make sure that there's collaboration and have some action items which are priorities and we need to ensure that all the partner organizations really come together and that governments uh, also invest in this area of work so we are at a very critical juncture now when we have recognized not only the importance of um, zoonotic diseases that can turn into pandemics but also of course the present threat of climate change and the one way to address all of these uh, issues together is really to bring public health disease prevention and environmental protection and sustainable uh, livelihoods particularly in the agriculture and veterinary sector all of these uh, together so if the pandemic has taught us anything it's that we're all stronger together we need the science we need the science to drive and produce the solutions but we also need the solidarity and this is where another area which affects the world as a whole and therefore we need global solidarity and collaboration to tackle this thank you very much thank you very much you can hear my congratulations to a very good statement and I think it uh, was really important to hear the, that uh, the WHO is now also part of this uh, cooperation and working together. And because that was a principal issue with One Health at the beginning when it was started mainly as a veterinary initiative. And we always had a problem to include the human health people uh, sufficiently. It's great to hear the WHO is joining uh, this initiative, and I hope this will be also translate into cooperation with human health on regional and country levels as well. So, and I particularly like to hear the word of solidarity. You know, it's really a very important part, and we see uh, the pandemic situation and the uh, uh, egoism coming up with vaccines and not sharing 
this. I think solidarity is another very important pillar to make One Health a successful story. So this session, we are really good at time. And I hand over to, uh, oh. uh, yeah. to you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Dieter. I think you concluded very nicely and I don't have to repeat it again. I just liked what we liked is solidarity, science and technology. That was a, ringing all these lectures. Thanks to all of you for cooperating with us and giving fantastic opening remarks to start with.